So, last class we have seen some consequences and some equivalences and how to uh, symbolize some ordinary uh, language arguments into propositional logic, then validate the ensuing consequences. Then we raised a question which tells that if some propositions are in some specified forms, you can see their models or non models easily. Okay. So, now we will see that all propositions can be converted or brought into such forms that is what we want to see. So, first let us give some name to those forms. So, we define those forms, we start with a literal. So, we say that uh, a literal can be a propositional variable or negation of a propositional variable. So, here P stands for any generic propositional variable and L stands for a literal. So, a literal can be a propositional variable or negation of any propositional variable. Then we come to defining some clauses. So, we say that a disjunctive clause can be a literal or it can be disjunction of two other clauses. So, say D or D. So, if you are very specific about the grammar, then you have to include a bracket here parenthesis, okay. because once it will be combined with other clauses, you need a bracket there, you need parenthesis. Similarly, a conjunctive clause can be either a literal or it can be conjunction of two other conjunctive clauses. Okay. Then finally, we define what we want. So, we say that a D and F can be disjunction of conjunctive clauses. Okay. So, that way we have to write it is a disjunction should be or of a conjunctive class and another conjunctive class. So, you say C or C. Okay. So, once you have this it means there can be finite number of disjunctions here not only two. Okay, it is recursive. Similarly, a C and F can be conjunction of two disjunctive clauses, but there is a problem when you give to this recursive definition, it says only C or C and D and F a C is already there. So, it allows only two conjunctive clauses to be or together. Right, but we need really any finite number. Fine. So what we do here is just like this: we take a conjunctive clause by definition, a DNF, and then disjunct together many DNFs. Right, just like this. So what we do? We say that it can be a conjunctive clause or a DNF. Or another DNF. Okay. Similarly, here what we do? We say CNF can be a disjunctive class or a CNF and a CNF. Okay. If it is very cryptic, we will define in words. Okay. So, our definition will be a literal is a propositional variable or negation of a propositional variable. That sentence comes from this. Next we go for disjunctive clauses. So, we say a disjunctive clause can be 
is a disjunction of literals. Okay. Then we say a conjunctive clause. is a conjunction of literals. Fine. So, when you read that a disjunctive clause is a disjunction of literals, this says a finite number of literals can be odd together. That is how you have to read it. So, a finite number includes 0 also that creates problem right. So, you say 0 number of literals will create confusion, we will not have that here, but 0 number of disjunction allowed. So, that means a single literal is by itself a disjunctive class right. Similarly, here a single literal will be taken as a conjunctive class also. Okay. So, next we define a DNF which can be read as disjunctive normal form proposition is a disjunction of conjunctive clauses. So, again with the same convention, if you have a single conjunctive class that can also be considered as a DNF. Right? The word DNF is used in two ways, we say a proposition is in DNF. So, there we do not read this proposition word, right? we say proposition is in disjunctive normal form. Also as it is for a DNF, a proposition which is in DNF, we say it is a DNF. So, in that case we read DNF means disjunctive normal form proposition, okay, both the ways it is being used. Now, similarly we can define a CNF, a CNF or conjunctive normal form proposition or just the normal form is a conjunction. Of disjunctive clauses. So, if you take a single literal, it is in DNF or CNF? Both, not either, both, huh? that is what you mean, right? Because a literal by itself is a conjunctive clause, a conjunctive clause by itself is a DNF. So, a literal is in DNF. Similarly, a literal by itself is a disjunctive class and a disjunctive class is again a CNF. Therefore, a literal is also is in CNF. Okay. Now, the question is how this conversion will take place. So, one way is to look at the truth table of any proposition and then get the models. So, you go the reverse way, right? but that defeats the purpose. right? We want to see the models from the proposition. Now, you are considering the models and constructing the proposition. So, how does it help? Well, it helps in storing some knowledge there, that is all. Right? Storing that this is the model of that. It is equivalent to telling that these are the models we have found out. Fine? So, you should have some different ways of uh, finding out DNF or CNF equivalent to a proposition. Fine. So, it is easy to get it, because all that you need is your proposition should have only negation symbol, or symbol and symbol. So, first thing it says you should eliminate the implied symbol and biconditional symbol right, using your laws. Fine. So, if you write an algorithm for this normal form conversion it would first proceed with eliminating these two connectives. Fine. So, first step in the algorithm let us call it 
normal form conversion. So, there we should first eliminate this and this by using the laws. So, which laws you may be using by using say x implies y is equivalent to not x or y okay. and then x by conditional y is equivalent to and of both the things you can take. So, you say not x or y and x or not y. It is combination of x implies y and y implies x, right? Or you can write it in a different way. Huh? You can also say x if and only if y is equivalent to, yeah, you just see its models. Its models are when x and y are having the same truth value, right? So, if x y both are true, you get x and y or let us write it first x and y are both are false. So, not x and not y. Any one of this can be used. Okay. Sometimes negation of all those things if you can recognize it becomes quicker. For example, not of x implies y you can straight forward write x and not y. Similarly, these two also. Okay, but anyway, we'll take care of that later. So, second thing is, now once you have applied this step, your proposition doesn't have the symbols implies and biconditional. Then what should we do? See, all that we want is a conjunction of disjunctions of literals or a disjunction of conjunctions of literals. So, we need literals. That means negation symbol should not come anywhere else except near the propositional variables. Okay. So, you have to take the negation symbol near the propositional variable. Fine. So, use De Morgan. So, use De Morgan law. What are the laws? Not of x or y is equivalent to not x and not y. The other one is not of x and y is equivalent to not x or not y, but literals also have another property. There cannot be two negation or three negation symbols. Right? This might introduce many more negation symbols near the propositional variables. So, you have to eliminate them that is use double negation and double negation for taking the negation symbol close to the propositional variables. Next step, see whatever we have done till now has also a name, it is called a negation normal form, where you have the negation now form uh, negation with the propositional variables, but ands and ors can be anywhere in some way they are there that is all. We want a specific form again, ands of ors or ors of ands. So, finally, what we have to do? Use distributivity. So, third step is use laws of distributivity which can be written as x or y and z is equivalent to x or y and x or z also the other way.
So, this is if you have something some proportional variable let us say here p or y and z then you can put in this form, but if it is in the form y and z or a p. So, you need commutativity, you need also associativity right, because you are not going to write all those parentheses fine and laws of commutativity and associativity to bring the proposition to DNF or CNF. Is that okay? So, let us see the first problem. P implies not Q. So, it says first we have to eliminate this two occurrences of implies. So, this is equivalent to not of P or not Q and R and not P or not Q. Okay. Next, there is no need of using De Morgan here, not is never outside, hmm. it is near the propositional variables, okay. they are already literals. So, second step is gone, we go for distributing. So, now this not p when distributed over this gives not p or not q and not p or r and not p or not q fine. So, due to associativity we can forget the brackets. So, we just write it as not p or not q and not p or r and not p or not q. Fine, but still there are some other ways. Like, if you recognize here, not p or something, and not p or something, so you could have used distributed in the other direction. Fine. So what does that give? It will be not p or not q and r and not q is it right you check it back not p r not q and r okay and not p r not q okay now what should you do this one not q and r and not q so you use the law of idempotency which is not specified in the algorithm. Algorithm does not need it anyway, but if you know some laws of absorption, laws of idempotency, they will help you in simplifying the CNF or DNF. Okay. So, now you can modify even the algorithm if you want to use them. Now, what does it say? This becomes not Q and R, that is all, because not Q and not Q is equivalent to not Q. So, this gives not P or not q and r this is a simplified version okay see sometimes you may reach at one proposition which is in dnf but you want a cnf so what should you do there just blindly use distributivity you would get it huh? that is not easy in terms of computer time because so many factors will there, they will be multiplied out, fine. But that is okay, you can get a CNF. 
so there is a way fine so this is a theorem again what you have done till now through an algorithm it says that every proposition can be converted to a cnf and every proposition can be converted to a dnf equivalently preserving equivalence you can convert anyway anything right but all that it says that equivalence is preserved fine so let's see another so second problem p implies q or q implies not r or r implies q implies not of not of q implies p implies q if and only if r first parenthesis is not required So what do we do? We have to eliminate the connectives, implies and biconditional. So not P or Q, that is for this implication, or not Q or not R for this implication, or not R or Q for this implication. Let's keep it. It will create problem otherwise. Hmm? So implies now not of not so you say not q or p again keep it now q biconditional r which is not q or r and q or not r one more bracket Okay. So there is a nested implication. One is here outside. This is say inside. First, let's take care of this. You can take care of both at a time. Huh? But let's take care of this first. So this gives. Okay, these are all ors. So I can put them together with associativity. this implies not of now this becomes not of this or this okay and not of this is what you can use double negation straight forward anything can be used anywhere but we wanted to follow the algorithm so we have to write this way anyway double negation we are omitting so once you take out this it becomes not q or p or this one is it okay? It's confusing. Okay, let's take not of this thing. So that is not of whole thing. Okay, not x or y. You need one more. Okay. So that gives. See, if you want to write all those things, you can. But some simplification you can do. So see here that Q or not Q is occurring. Right. So with that, if you make any R, it will be remaining that only. Because this is equivalent to top, right? So you can simplify here itself. You take top as this, and then top implies x is equivalent to what? X. That also you can do, right? But if you don't want to do, still it's all right. You can proceed. Doesn't matter. Huh? Let's take that. as it is 
so this will be negated because this implication is there and then or with the whole thing so that gives or the whole thing so that is not of okay as per the algorithm we have not used any simplification till now now algorithm says next step is to go for the distributions before that you may need de morgan's law fine so if you use de morgan's law what does it say this not will go inside so de morgan's law says that while it goes inside it goes on changing the ors to ands and ands to ors right that's what it will do and if you use double negation along with that so when it goes it becomes p and not q and q and so on is it okay so you can write as equivalent of when that not goes inside you say p and not q and q and r and r and not q okay when this not goes inside then r is as it is so r this not again goes inside so when this not goes this double negation is not there as if huh? so now what happens not not q becomes q and not p okay first term gives q1 not p then this or becomes and and next is this not is going so here it becomes q and not r okay q and not r this becomes r then not q and r okay just verify with yours okay next what should we do is it in any form here is one conjunctive class or there should be other conjunctive classes it is not a conjunctive class okay you have to distribute we just keep it as it is or so which one to distribute this and only or is here okay inside also you can distribute but then suppose i take this and distribute this and it becomes this and this or so you need another distribution okay any other simplification can be done suppose you distribute this can you distribute this which one this yeah let's try that okay so this is q1 not p and q1 not r that is one other factor is q1 not p 
and not q 1 r is that ok fine this is in correct form yeah we do not need the brackets you have to take away the parenthesis that is all right to bring it to looking good <laughs> only for elegance. So, what we do q 1 not p and q and not r another is q 1 not p and not q 1 r right. So, it is in dnf fine. Okay. Now, to bring it to CNF, distribute everything. Huh? So, how many factors are here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here are 1, 2, 3, 4. Here are 4. So, it will give you how many clauses there? 6 into 4 into 4 clauses, right? That becomes clumsy. Fine. So, what you need is use the absorption and idempotency. Okay and the laws of constants, because you know if it is not q and q this becomes bottom right that will help. So, laws of constants also will be helpful fine. So, what we are using is laws of constants idempotency and absorption. what is absorption idempotency means x operated with x right x r x is equivalent to x x and x is equivalent to x fine what is absorption if you have x or y then you take and x so that x is absorbed in x or y fine so it says x or y and x is equivalent to x or y or x huh? well you think of union and intersection let us say is a set a union b and a and is intersection huh? x not x and y. Now, what about x and y or x? That is again x. x. Fine. These are laws of absorption. Now, let us see what comes out of this. So, this is equivalent to now we observe this and just write bottom ah. or what else q is idempotency. So, not p and q and not r next is q and not q is bottom again. Now, this is in DNF or CNF. Both. Huh? Now, it is in DNF and also in CNF. How? As a DNF, it has a single class, single conjunctive class, this itself, right? This is the class conjunctive class. As the CNF, the clauses are the literals. There are three clauses in a CNF, in this CNF, and there is a single class in the DNF. Okay. 
So, you did not have to write all those 6 into 4 into 4 disjunctions, right. Sometimes the laws will help you this way. Well, what you observed here is writing your first class as bottom, because q is there, not q is there. Now, suppose you find finally, that in every class you have a literal and its negation, you have a professional variable and its negation, then automatically it will be bottom, it will be unsatisfiable, fine. So, that means, if it is a DNF and you find that every class is having a pair of complementary literals, then you say that it is a unsatisfiable proposition, right. Is the observation clear? Now, can you prove the converse? If it is in DNF, it is unsatisfiable, then every class should contain a pair of complementary literals. Yeah, clear? You see its contribution. Huh? If not, suppose there is a class where there is not a pair of complementary literals, fine. Then, what do you do? Give one to each of the literals, you are defining an interpretation. So, define the interpretation this way, each of the literals will get one. A literal can be not of p, so that p will become 0, fine. So, that interpretation becomes a model for the proposition, that is a model, so it is not unsatisfiable, fine. Is that clear? So, what we observe is a DNF is unsatisfiable if and only if each conjunctive clause in it contains a pair of complementary laterals. So, a pair of complementary literal means for some professional variable p, there is p, there is not p. Okay. p and not p are called complementary literals, complementary to each other. Right. The same way you can say a C and F is, is valid, because you take a C and F, so consider a disjunctive clause in it that clause is having a pair of complementary literals p and uh, p or not p and then some or other r's. So, that p or not p becomes top. Now, every clause is top, they are under together. So, finally, it is top, right. So, C and f is valid if and only if each disjunctive clause in it contains a pair of complementary laterals. So, that means, if you convert to a normal form, then you can decide whether it is valid or it is not. Validity can be decided by changing it to C and F, fine. If you want to find whether it is satisfiable or not, then convert it to D and F, you can find out whether it is satisfiable or not. Is that clear? But unfortunately, one of the forms does not tell you both. So, you may need distribution and some other laws to be applied, fine. So, it might be difficult that whether a DNF is valid or not, the decision can be difficult unless you convert it to a CNF again. Similarly, whether a CNF is satisfiable or not, it might be difficult to decide, right. Difficult in the sense of what? Not that you cannot do it, huh? it might take some time. At least you have to convert it to the other form and then decide, okay. So, let us take the problem 3.
now you want to convert it to DNF or CNF and this decide whether this is satisfiable or it is valid, unsatisfiable or valid. Fine. So, let us first convert it. So, this says I have negation symbol. Okay. See some simplification you can see here. It is in the form of not implies. So, you can straightforward use not of x implies y is equivalent to x and not y, right? Instead of writing or and then applying De Morgan. So, this gives P implies Q and Q implies R implies P implies R. Okay. It is negation. What we are doing is not of x implies y is equivalent to x and not y. Fine. All right. Next, what should we see? Negation again. So I say P implies Q and Q implies R and not of P implies R. Once more, okay. So now this becomes not P or Q and not Q or R and P and not R, which is in. CNF, yeah. Each one is a disjunctive class. So naturally, it came to CNF. But CNF says it is valid or not can be decided. Is it valid? It is not, because there is one class where there is not a pair of complementary literals. There is a class where there is not a pair of complementary literals. If not P is there, P is not there. If Q is there, not Q is not there. For validity, each class should have a pair of complementary literals. Here at least there is one that itself is a literal propositional variable. So, no pair can be available there. Right? Clear? So, it is not valid that much we know. It is invalid. Now, immediately we conclude it is invalid. But invalid means it can be satisfiable, it can be unsatisfiable, and right? it looks to be unsatisfiable. So, to apply that observation, what we need is convert it to a DNF, then only you can do it. So, let us convert and see. You can go back and do some tricks, but from here itself we can do. So, let us see. Our principle says if you distribute, you should get. So, distribute it now. So, this is one class, this is another class. It is like multiplying x plus y into y plus z into z plus x into x plus w or something, four factors. right? So, choose one factor from each and write them, that is what you will be doing. Okay? So, it gives not p and not q and p and not r. r not P and not Q, not Q is gone. So, I take R now and P and not a R. I take the next factor Q and not Q and P and not R or Q and R and P and not R. Okay. So, this is in DNF and now we go back to the principle apply it. So, here we see that P 
not p there is a pair of complementary laterals in the next class there is also p not v in the next class q not q in the next class r not r okay so it is unsatisfiable is it clear so again let's take one more fourth one this is p implies not q implies r and p implies not q implies p implies r so we start eliminating this is equivalent to not p or first class i am taking first proposition before this and so not p or this so that will be again not of not q which is q or r okay and not p or not q so not of this whole thing or not p or r do it yourself huh? okay so next i take not inside so that gives p and not q and not r or again here p and q or not p or r right now you observe this is a conjunctive class this is a conjunctive class or is here or is also here so i should remove these two brackets that's all they are all ors fine so that not p itself will become a conjunctive class so i just remove and remove this right so this is in dnf fine so dnf says what satisfiable or unsatisfiable this is not unsatisfiable because there is a class having no pair of complementary laterals so it is satisfiable but it may be valid right it's a weaker thing it can be stronger it can be valid also so change it to cnf and check so what will happen there p p not p that class is gone equivalent to top then uh, p q not p once not p is there p is gone huh? so you check the next not q with q will give and similarly not r with r will give so that will become valid you can simplify also where to simplify huh? it is not q it is q it doesn't matter it is a smaller one so just multiply out and convert it to cnf by distribution just distribute the ors and ands then you get that it is valid 